So welcome. Um, Ugh, it is allergy season again, as our seasons are changing. Um, the pandemic is behind us and people are not wearing masks as much. And so the change in the weather, the dryness that we've had in the country leads us back into this allergy season once again. Um, good evening, my name is Dr. Randy Case and I welcome you to this evening's Case Talk. I'm gonna start with a disclaimer. Um, the following does not, um, is not intended to diagnose or treat any medical conditions. Um, this discussion does not constitute or establish a doctor-patient relationship. This information in this lecture is for informational purposes only, and I don't have any vested interest in any product or company referenced in this lecture, nor am I being paid to advertise for any product or manufacturer. So I just want to make that clear. Anything that I recommend, I've personally researched, and it's something that I recommend in my practice. So when it comes to allergies, there's a lot of symptoms that we recognize, right? Symptoms like itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, being congested, that dreadful runny nose, feeling very tired, sometimes having a cough or an upper respiratory irritation. Sometimes a sore throat can be part of your allergy reaction. Um, some people get a headache, which is usually triggered by some sinus congestion. Um, some people can get some swelling, some irritation, and a rash can be part of an allergic reaction. I think it's important that, especially now coming out of a pandemic, that we recognize that there's not just allergies, there's not just COVID. Anytime anybody sneezes anymore, the first thing we think of is it must be COVID and we have to go run and get a test. But even before COVID, we had allergies, seasonal allergies. We had allergies to food, allergies to different toxins or environmental stimulus. We also have had colds, which are our rhinovirus, adenovirus. Those viruses are still around. We just haven't really experienced them in full force because we've all been wearing masks so much. The flu, this is the season when we start to track flu cases. And as the weather changes, people are more susceptible. Now that kids are back in person, back in school, people are back in person into their offices. There's more air being breathed. There's air exchange. So flu, flu is gonna start to spread. And as we know, the flu spreads pretty rapidly, um, just like COVID-19 did. So when we look at our symptom picture, we wanna understand too that not all the symptoms of COVID are the same. So allergies, you may have your dry cough, you may have some fatigue, you may have a headache, itchy, watery eyes, nasal congestion, runny nose, but typically you're not gonna have too many body aches, you're not gonna have chills, you probably won't have a fever, that would be pretty rare. It's rare when you have an allergic reaction to something to have nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea unless it's a reaction to a food. Um, and then sometimes you'll have a sore throat. You may have shortness of breath just because there's some lung or air uh, irritation in the lungs. With the flu, the body aches, the chills. So sometimes those symptoms are gonna be a little bit different. So I just thought it would be important to recognize looking at the symptoms with colds, flu, with COVID, you won't get the itchy, watery eyes most of the time that you would get with, the, with a typical allergic reaction. So how do these allergic reactions happen? So in our bodies, we have all these cells. And when we're exposed to something for the first time, if the body doesn't recognize it, the body is going to release these antibodies, which are these little Y-shaped structures here. So there's a lot of different antibodies. Some are immediate reaction antibodies and other are delayed sensitivity. So you may hear about IgG or IgM. Those are more delayed reaction sensitivity antibodies. IgG, this is where you have your allergies to food. This is where you have allergies to say cat dander, to pollen, to ragweed. So when the body gets exposed to these things, it produces the antibodies. The antibodies then attach to what's called a mast cell. And a mast cell is what carries all of those granules that stimulate the runny nose, the, um, 
your uh, the typical allergic reaction. So you're going to get stuffy. You're going to get um, mucus production. You're going to get the cough. You're going to get irritation. When the body is exposed to that antibody for a second time, that mast cell releases chemicals, and those chemicals are what trigger that allergy or the symptom picture that we we associate with allergies. So histamines are really interesting because histamines are chemicals that float around our body. So we're exposed, we have them in us already. When we're exposed, exposed to um, allergens, it's the histamine response that gives us those allergy symptoms, like the stuffy nose. Histamines are also in foods that we eat. So preserved meats, these are gonna be your smoked meats, alcohol, fermented foods like kimchi, sauerkraut. So all of these foods, these also contain probiotics. So we're eating a lot more of these these days. Dried fruits, avocados, which we know dried fruits, avocados, those are really good for us. Um, they contain those good fats. And so we try to bring more avocado, more coconut oils, more good fats into the diet without even thinking that if we have a histamine issue, if we have some allergies, these might trigger some of those reactions. Eggplants, spinach, shellfish, uh, things like shrimp, and certain cheeses, these all contain histamines. So it's not uncommon. I know when I eat shrimp, sometimes I'll have kind of a sneezing fit afterwards. And that's because of the histamine in the shellfish that triggers a reaction. And I start getting a little bit inflamed. I start getting more mucousy, and that will trigger the sneezing fit. There's also foods that we can eat that trigger histamine release in those mast cells. So not only do foods contain histamine, but some of them also trigger the release of histamine when we eat them. So if you already have allergic exposure and then you're eating some of these foods, this can trigger histamine and also trigger that allergic reaction. So it's almost like taking a full bucket and then you're adding more water to it. So we're already inflamed, we're already close to a reaction and then we eat something which triggers more histamine release. So that reaction is gonna be exaggerated. So foods, uh, again, alcohols, bananas, tomatoes, wheat germ, beans, uh, things like chocolate, how delicious is chocolate, um, citrus fruits, eat strawberries, um, pineapple, our mushrooms, and certain additives too. So if there's any, um, any sulfites, nitrites, sodium benzoate, preservatives, all of those things can trigger histamine release. So it's not uncommon if you're eating these things and however delicious or good for you they are, there are still gonna be certain people in the population that have to pick different foods that are also good and delicious because they do get reactions from eating these. So there's a lot of things that we have to think about before we put something into our mouths. And then uh, aside from that, there are foods that inhibit the enzymes. So this DAO is a diamine oxidase. It's an enzyme that's in your gut. And we all know how important the gut is. This enzyme actually helps to break down that histamine. So you may eat foods, but as long as you have this enzyme, you may have less of a reaction. If you drink alcohol, fermented drinks like kombucha, certain teas, energy drinks, those things inhibit this enzyme. And so it makes those histamines in the foods more reactive. So you can create a more allergic or reactive response to those foods. So I always go back to the gut. You always start with the gut because the gut is where we get all of our crosstalk from. So the gut and the brain, they, and our immune system, they're so intimately connected that it's important that we keep all three in mind whenever we're thinking of any biochemistry in the body. So this, the immune system really has its training ground in the gut. So when you think of eating all of these foods, breathing in all of, uh, uh, you know, different inhale, inhalants, um, the gut is what kind of tastes that first. It experiences it first, okay? The lungs as well, but more in the gut, there's different cells in the gut that are going to kind of test what's in the gut and it's going to see if the body's been exposed to that before. So if the body hasn't been exposed to it, then that's going to trigger your immune system. So if the gut is not healthy, that trigger system is going to be going on and on. It's going to be going continuously and you're going to have a lot more inflammation. You're going to have a lot more reactivity. So whenever I see a patient 
We always look at the gut first. We look at what could be triggering any immune reactions. We work on repairing the gut. So that's usually the first stage in getting the body better. The five R's of gut repair. First, we tend to remove anything that could be causing irritation. So this is usually done with an elimination diet. We pull out foods that contain histamines. We pull out foods that are known to cause immune reactions. We work to restore anything that could be missing in the gut. So this could be enzymes. This could be acid to break food down. This could be B vitamins. This could be um, some beneficial bacteria. Then we repair. So we wanna make sure that that gut is able to filter good things from bad things. There are certain things that we want to cross the gut like our amino acids and all our nutrients and our vitamins and antioxidants. But then there's other things that we may be exposed to like bacteria, other toxins that we don't want to cross that gut barrier. And in many cases, just living your life can create holes, which we call leaky gut. So we get these holes and we get an increased exposure to things that we shouldn't. So our immune system is constantly being triggered. So we try to repair the gut and we do this with things like glutamine, aloe vera, marshmallow root. These things are all very healing, ginger, very calming for the gut. And it helps to patch up those holes so that there's a, a good barrier between what's good and bad for the body. And we can selectively choose to take up those things that are really good and beneficial. Reinoculation. So this R is really important. We all know about our probiotics and the probiotics are excellent at maintaining a good healthy milieu, so to speak. So these produce your serotonin, these help to produce your B vitamins. These help to make sure that there's more good bacteria than there are bad bacteria. So just by population control, the more good bacteria we have, there's no room for the bad bacteria and it helps to differentiate and get rid of anybody that shouldn't be there. And then really working on relaxation, working on good nutrition and hydration and good exercise and keeping the body, the blood flow, the oxygen levels, keeping all of the cells healthy. And that's gonna also help um, your gut talk to your brain and keep your immune system happy and calm. So I wanted to go over some tips. Now I know in a lot of parts of the country, I know in New Jersey specifically, We've had a really, really hot winter. I mean, hot summer. Um, we're going into winter. Um, but the summer has been really dry and it's been really hot. And in California and other places in the country, it's been drought conditions and it's just been super hot. When things are dry like that, these um, the allergy triggers are going to kind of blow around a little bit more and we'll have more exposure. So in order to limit your exposure, you know, on days that are super dry or days that are super windy, you may want to stay inside more so that you're not exposed. You're not breathing in a lot of those triggers that are floating around and, and flying in the wind. Using humidifiers in the house help to humidify the air. So it's going to make things a little bit heavier. So they're not going to float around. You won't be inhaling them as much and they're going to kind of drop and they're going to be heavier. So they're going to fall. Using indoor air filters, air purifiers are helpful to kind of clean the air that you're breathing. So that whether it's a ionizing air purifier or it's an actual filter, it's definitely gonna catch some of those particles and minimize what's in the air. Um, when you're in your car, you know, we all like to keep the windows open, but if you know it's a high pollen or high ragweed count day, you may wanna use the recycled air you can do that indoors or you can do that in your car so that you have less exposure. Um, your bedding, if you have animals, if you're out and about all day, you wanna make sure that you change your bedding and you change your clothes um, frequently. Um, taking a shower at night before you go to bed so you're not taking all of the, the, um, the pollen or whatever could be on your clothes or on your skin, you're not taking that into the bed with you so you rinse all that off. Certainly working on the gut and making that as healthy and your immune system as calm as possible. Avoiding your triggers. So if you know that you know eating shellfish triggers an immune reaction, or if you know that um, going out when it's high ragweed is gonna trigger your allergies, then maybe try and, and avoid those triggers. Supporting your immune function, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. So there's definitely some immune uh, beneficial herbs 
and some um, chemicals that you can take that help to mitigate some of those allergic reactions and keeping your nasal passages clear. So whether this is just rinsing your face, this could be using a neti pot, this could be using um, a nasal spray. You wanna keep those nasal passages open, keep everything moist so that things are able to drain so you don't get a lot of backed up. But when you get backed up, you build up that pressure in your sinuses and that can lead to headaches. So definitely keeping the nasal passages and your throat clear is gonna be good for better breathing. Make sure you're getting plenty of rest, which is always hard because a lot of us are not on a regular basis because we're so busy. And then just hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I mean, you should be drinking half your weight in ounces. And the more hydrated you are, the less susceptible you're going to be to a lot of different things. So I mentioned before, there's a lot of really good herbs. There's a lot of um, chemicals and good nutrition in our foods that we eat that are powerful for allergy support. So I just wanted to list a couple here and give you an idea of what they do. So if you are shopping um, and you're looking at different um, allergy uh, medications or allergy support supplements, these are some of the things you're gonna find. So quercetin, quercetin is wonderful. It inhibits those um, enzymes that trigger inflammation. It mediates your inflammation and it mediates the response from those mast cells. And the mast cells are those cells that secrete histamine. So this helps to decrease the amount of histamine released, which decreases the amount of inflammation. Nettles is another one. Nettles is a nice plant. Um, it's very anti-inflammatory. So you'll see a lot of um, allergy supplements that add nettles into the mix just because it's very calming. It's good to kind of mitigate that mast cell reaction as well. Things like butterbur. Butterbur is used as an antihistamine. It can also be used for some migraine treatments. So it's good for um, smooth muscle relaxation. So there's a lot of benefits to butterbur. Bromelain is an enzyme that's found in pineapple and it's very anti-inflammatory. Bromelain is good for targeting, especially asthma, breathing difficulties, opening the airway. Um, if you have um, asthma and you take bromelain, it can it can um, decrease the amount of inflammation in those in the, the bronchioles, so it opens the airway for you. Astragalus is a great herb. Astragalus has a lot of antiviral and antibacterial properties to it. Eleuthero. Eleuthero is also known as Siberian ginseng. So there's a lot of different kinds of ginseng. American ginseng is one. Um, this specifically Siberian ginseng is known to be a mast cell inhibitor. So it kind of turns those mast cells down so that you don't get that response and you don't get that inflammation. And it also acts as a great antiviral. Rutin is a... Um, it's a great anti-inflammatory, anti-free uh, radical compound, and it's found in things like asparagus. Um, so it's found in the foods that we eat, um, and it has a great effect on the airway. So it also helps with smooth muscle relaxation. It opens the airway. It helps you breathe a little bit better. Mangosteen, this is a fruit, actually. And it has a lot of antihistamine and anti-inflammatory properties to it. Ginger. So we know ginger. Everyone recommends ginger when you have an upset stomach. Ginger is very calming for the gut. So ginger also helps to tone down that immune reaction and the immune system. It's, it works as an antihistamine. Anti so it helps with the allergic reaction and the production of chemicals that are going to increase the mucus and increase that um, inflammatory reaction. NAC is great for the airway. It helps with your breathing. This was helpful in people with COVID. Um, they would use this with an inhaler and it will help to open the airway so they could breathe better. It also helps your liver to detox. So in, detox is another important, important aspect of an allergic response. The, the importance of the liver and detox comes into play when you have exposure and you need to get rid of these these allergens. So the liver plays a big role in conjugating or binding those allergens, getting them out of your system, and then helping your body to eliminate them. So things like NAC, 
things like broccoli, things like Brussels sprouts, those are going to help your liver to function better. So you're going to be able to clear those toxins and get them out of the body. Things like um, grape seed extract. What this does, it's kind of interesting. So when you take vitamin C, we know vitamin C has a mitigating effect on the immune system. And one thing that grape seed extract does is help to preserve vitamin C so it's not broken down as quickly by the body. It also helps to relax smooth muscle. Um, DMG, which is dimethylglycine, this helps with oxygenation. It helps to get more oxygen into the tissues. It helps the liver to detox. It also helps with uh, cardiovascular. It has cardiovascular effects. So it helps with your blood flow. It helps with oxygenation and all of those things. And of course your omegas. So omegas are in your fatty fish, like your salmon, your mackerel. Um, these are great for inflammation overall. It's also good as um, for anti-cholesterol. Um, so it's good for lowering your lipids. So these are really healthy. These are your healthy fats and your, um, your avocados, your coconut. So as long as you don't have a histamine response to the avocados, then you're getting that, those good omega-3s from that, that fruit. So at Morris Spine, so we like to offer our patients several choices because not everybody's body responds in the same way. So if you happen to be in the office, one thing that we do as kind of a specialty is applied kinesiology, which lets us use muscle testing to ask your body what would be the best supplement for your body. So in, in those situations, we'll have a patient um, in the office, we'll bring different options in and then we'll test their body. And in some cases, they'll weaken to certain things and they'll strengthen to others. So it gives us an idea of what supplements are gonna work best. Um, we also have online for our family and friends and patients that are away from New Jersey, we see patients all over the country. Um, so we do have an online dispensary now and so you can just log in here at fullscript.com um, at Morris Spine, and you can click on allergies. And then we have a whole list of supplements that are on there. If you have any questions, you can always call the office. We can recommend certain things. But some of the some of the things that we offer, we have quercetin phytosome, quercetin with a little bit of nettles thrown in. You can get, these are in capsules. We also have options for sprays. So sometimes sprays are really nice because you spray them in your mouth, they get absorbed immediately. So those are really beneficial for quick relief. Um, histo X, histo X is an antihistamine that you take when you're eating. So this helps to calm down if you have any histamine reactions related to the foods that you're eating. So histo X is great for that. Natural dehist is a nice combination of some quercetin. It has um, some nettles in it. It has some bromelain in it. So it's good as an anti-inflammatory, but also for the allergy and the histamine reaction. Things like histease, aller DHQ. So a lot of these are very similar, just a little bit different uh, formulas and different manufacturers. So we try, we have a, a couple of manufacturers that we work with. We've researched them all. Um, and we know what we're getting. We know that there's, there's quality control. We know that they're pharmaceutical grade. So we know the quality and we trust them. Cezyme is a vitamin C supplement to boost your immune system. What's nice about this particular one is that it has some of those enzymes, some of those digestive enzymes in it. So if you don't have enough digestive enzymes, if you don't have enough um, hydrochloric acid in your stomach, it helps with the whole digestive process and helps you to be able to absorb the vitamin C a little bit better. Other vitamins that really are great at mitigating your immune reaction would be your A, vitamin A and vitamin D. So we know from research now that people with COVID, people with inflammatory reactions that have higher levels of vitamin D tend to get better faster and have better outcomes. So vitamin D, if you go to your doctor for a physical, if they don't order it, ask them to order it because it's really good to know what your values are. Zinc is also another great um, immune beneficial supplement. So it helps with your immune system going into winter. It helps with your immune system relating to allergies and reactions. Um, this ACS nasal spray here, this has a little bit of colloidal silver in it. So not only do you get the benefits of the nasal spray, but having that little bit of silver 
and you're doing that, it, get, it prevents any bacterial or fungal infection from forming up in the sinuses. So you get a little bit of extra benefit from having that, that small bit of colloidal silver. Thyme, if you can get, you put more thyme in your food, you can actually steep some thyme in tea. It's very drying. So if you have a lot of mucus production, if you feel really um, inflamed and drippy, um, drinking some thyme tea or even having some thyme in a, in a bowl and you just put a towel over your head and you can breathe in that steam, that can help you dry out. Um, immuno DMG is also a very immune, um, immune beneficial supportive supplement that has dimethylglycine in it. And then again, your omegas. So all of the supplements that help with the allergic reactions and all of the supplements that can help to really shore up your immune system as we move into cold and flu season and allergy season, um, we carry them all. Um, we try to carry a wide range. And if you have any questions at all, we encourage you to call us, ask questions, um, and then we can kind of direct you as best that we can. So our contact information at the office is Dr. Randy Case, Morris Spine and Sport, Root Cause Functional Medicine Center. We're located in Morristown, New Jersey. Our number is right here and our website, Morris Spine and Sport. You can also, we're so, we're so like modern now. You can scan this little symbol right here and it takes you right to our website. And please like us, follow us, share us, comment. Um, I'm kind of an old timer. So all of this social media stuff is kind of new to me. My husband helps me tremendously with this stuff. Um, and we really appreciate it. If you would like us, follow us, share, comment, um, let us know what you think. Um, all of that is really helpful and we appreciate it so much. So I wanna thank you for joining. Um, if you missed any part of this and you want to see it, we have a, our uh, YouTube channel, Morris Spine and Sport, and this is going to be posted on that channel. And there's also some other really good videos there. So I encourage you to go to the YouTube channel, follow us. That way you'll get an update every time we post something new and come see us if you can, or give us a call, check in. We'd love to hear from you. So thank you for joining and we hope that you have a great night. Any questions? All right, well, if anybody has any questions, feel free, you can put them in the chat or you can email us at info at morrisfinansport.com. So I wish you all a great night. It's good to see you all. And we'll check in with you again soon. Take care.